In this video I will be painting a rose of Sharon as suggested by one of my viewers and I will try to combine watercolor with color pencils. I usually try to keep pencil drawing for my flower paintings to a minimum but for this one I'm going to do something different. I want my watercolor to be more controlled than I usually paint so I'm actually going to transfer the photo using charcoal rub on the back of the printout to have a very accurate drawing so I can see where all the petals are so I can fairly precisely paint them with watercolor and then enhance them a little bit with colored pencils. But I don't want it to be mixed media painting so I will have to be very subtle so keep watching till the end to see how that turns out and what exactly I'm talking about. Another thing that I'm going to do differently in this painting that I don't always do, I am going to start not with a flower but with a background. I want to establish the darker background and keep my flower very light because you see it's sunlit but if I start painting with the flower there is always a risk of over darkening it because I will be comparing it to the white background instead of this dark green background that I have in the reference photo. I want the background to be soft and watercolory, so I'm going to paint it wet on wet. I apply the first layer of watercolor using a, using this big Chinese brush and I will immediately try to drop in more paint into the wet areas. And you see, because I painted around the flower, paint doesn't run onto the dry areas of paper, so I'm safe to kind of mix and play with it only on the areas that are going to be the background. And as you saw, I started with lemon yellow. For sunlit subjects, I always like to start with yellow or add a little bit of yellow in, in them somewhere because without yellow, it's very hard to create that illusion of warm light in watercolor. first layer of the background. I'll let everything dry and now let's darken certain areas. As you see in the background there are some shadow areas which I want to paint as well and also I can start working on the leaves which are also very dark and give nice contrast to the flower, kind of frame it. So I'm going to use the same approach in my painting. The palette that I'm using is fairly limited. I used lemon yellow, opera pink, phthalo blue, cascade green, my favorite green, cobalt blue, and a tiny bit of new gamboge. Even though I'm using just a few colors, by mixing them on paper I achieve, I think, pretty colorful and varied effect.
it for quite a bit to make sure my background is bone dry. We cannot start working on the flower until the background dries completely because then I will get paint running into the flower and contaminating my surface. I'm going to paint from overall form to smaller details. Very light wash. Having a dark background really helps me to see how light my wash needs to be. Very light wash of upper pink. Slightly more intense towards the bottom because that's where the core shadow of the flower is. If you think about it as a simplified form, it's more or less the sphere, just kind of all cut up into little pieces, but overall it's a rounded shape. The sun shines on it from the top and the lower portion of the flower will be in shadow. And while the flower is still wet, we can immediately drop in some more pigment in those shadow areas. So just intensifying some colors in the center of the flower where I see some soft edges. I will add hard edges at the next stage of development. <music> drawing really helps me when I want to work in this controlled more realistic manner because I can actually see the petals I don't have to guess where things are and I can move on to my next stage now I waited for the flower to dry and I can add some hard edges so this will be the cast shadows from the petals so the petals will have hard edge and the shadow I will need to soften those shadows on the side opposite from the petal center of the flower the cast shadows are very dark so a lot of pigment there straight out of the pan that gives me the necessary contrast if you're painting flowers and they just look flat and you can't figure out why look at the center and make sure that your shadows there are sufficiently dark definition to the petals of the flower I want to try and use color pencils I bought a new set uh, this is 36 pencil Prismacolor set uh, I'm going to try this I already had one I had this Dervent color soft the problem with this 12 pencil set that I had is that not very many colors work for flower paintings. So I'm hoping this set will work better. I'm going to open it right now. And let's see which colors we have. Because you know flowers, they have 
pretty specific palette usually. And I paint, paint a lot of pink flowers. Okay, so we have some nice greens and blues and yellows and reds and we have a whole selection some more yellows here and a whole selection of pinks and there's one more tray again more yellows and pinks and some nice greens i think this larger set will work a lot better and it was actually more economical to buy a larger set than just a small 12 pencil set okay let's start with the bottom edge i have dark green pencil and i want to make the edge of the petal a little more jagged because when i painted with a brush the brush smooths it out a little bit so i can add a little bit more definition to the edge of the flower here and I'm going to try white pencil, see if I can restore some whites. It's not opaque enough, so I think I'm going to use my usual white gouache to do that. But white pencil lightens colors a little bit if you apply it on top of them, so that could be useful in some areas. And still missing in my painting, but it looks very attractive in the photo. Those little droplets of water on the flower. They would be very hard to paint. I would need a tiny brush, but with pencil I can first of all distribute them and also they will cast tiny little shadows and they will have a tiny little highlight. So I can do that with my pencils very easily because they're sharp and much easier to handle than a brush full of paint. I make sure to work with the pencil with kind of scrubbing motion. I don't want the pencil marks to be very different from watercolor. I don't want to have a mixed media painting. I want it to look all like watercolor. So I figured that if I draw something with a pencil and if it's too pronounced, it just looks too foreign, let's say, to this painting. I can put a tiny little stroke of watercolor on top of it and it will blend a lot better. The pencil doesn't run, it's not watercolor pencil, but covering the pencil strokes with a little bit of watercolor really helps to blend everything together. As I mentioned in the beginning, one of the viewers of my channel suggested that I paint Rose of Sharon because she watched me paint hollyhocks and Rose of Sharon is a similar flower. It's kind of similar to a lot of my favorite flowers. Hibiscus, it resembles peony a little bit, which are my absolute favorite, and also hollyhocks. So I found this photo and indeed this is a beautiful flower. I love pinks, so I jumped at the chance to paint it. And if you have any favorite flowers that you haven't seen me paint on my channel yet, I hope you will leave me a comment with some suggestions which ones you like and which ones you would like me to paint and make a video. I always appreciate all your comments and suggestions. And let's add little highlights on those uh, drops of water with white gouache, maybe a little more definition to the edges of the petals. And here's the final result. You see the pencil is perfectly blended with watercolor. It helped me to define certain details in my watercolor painting, but it doesn't look separate from my watercolor texture. I hope you find this video useful and you will give this technique a try sometime. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video here on Tamirab Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!